Hello everybody, and welcome back to another Argent Saga video. We're pretty much continuing with our set analysis today. Today we're going to be reviewing the water element, which is how I've been doing these, re these reviews. I've pretty much been basing them off the element. I've already done dark, air, and fire, so if you want to go check those out before this set review, uh, feel free to do so. If not, you can start right here. Um, but anyway, uh, I've gone through them, you know, from, from common all the way to argent rare, and I've given my opinion on them. So I hope you enjoy. So today we're going to be reviewing the water element, and the water element's champion is Jamil, the cryptic caster. And his effect reads, place one counter on this card for each water unit that comes into play on your field. Remove three counters from this card, draw two cards, then discard one. So I really like this champion. I think he's very good. And uh, we're looking to see if any of these cards from Betrayal revolve around this. Obviously, this is pretty generic. And this champion was used a lot whenever the intro decks were the only thing that were around for the meta. But now with Betrayal being released, who knows where the meta is going to shift. Um, so yeah, let's look for some cards uh, in Betrayal for the Water Element that maybe help out with this strategy. Um, but first, we need to look at the Spirit for Water as well. So the Spirit for the Water Element is Fizzy the Water Spirit. And his or her effect reads, Once per turn, during your turn, Shard Drain 1, draw 1 card. Or during your turn, Soul Burst, draw 1 card. So follows with the champion here you're drawing cards by shard draining which is putting one of the shards on the bottom of your shard deck to draw a card or you can soul burst it and then draw a card so pretty straightforward but still a very good spirit in my opinion so let's take a look at what this first set of argent saga has to offer for this element so as always, we're going to start with the commons. So our first common is called Ancient Serpent's Breath. It's a spell card with Instacast, and it reads, as an additional cost to play this card, you may shard drain one. If you do, return target unit to the top of its owner's deck. Return target unit with cost two or less to its owner's hand, then its owner draws one card. So a couple things here. It's a one instacast to return any target unit with cost two or less to its owner's hand, and then it draws a card. This card is very good in getting rid of tokens. So anytime you hit a light tower early, or if your uh, opponent is playing Sola, uh, which is the light spirit to create a token, you can get rid of it automatically. Now, even though uh, you would bounce a token to your opponent's hand, the token doesn't really go back to the hand it would kind of go away your opponent would still draw so that's something to keep in mind um, you can also return your own stuff so it doesn't need to be your opponent that you're targeting with this effect but the fact that it has two effects for a cost of one is really good and this card's extremely good late game so uh, i think this is an instant three of i really like this card next we have cryptic secret which is a two cost spell that reads play only if there is a destroyed light or water tower. Shuffle target unit back into its owner's deck. I mean, this card is interesting, um, but the fact that it's completely dead unless there's a light or water tower destroyed, in my opinion, kind of makes it unplayable. But uh, I don't know if there's an option to possibly um, find in the future where the light or water tower is so you can target it and destroy it early and make this live, maybe this becomes playable. But on the surface, I think this card isn't that great. Next up, we got Drained Hag, which is a three cost unit that reads this card costs one less to play for each time you use Shard Drain this turn. This card's okay. You know, uh, you're really not gonna be Shard Draining early unless you're desperate. So uh, this card comes out late at a cost of two. Uh, I don't know, it, it seems you know, like one of those commons that just isn't very good. It's just thrown in there for filler. So not a big fan of this. Next, we have Gathering Shard Light, which is a two cost spell with the Instacast that reads draw two cards and discard one card. So cards like this, not too bad. Uh, for a cost of two to draw two and then discard one, uh, I don't know if it's worth it. 
I think there are better cards than this. Still though, not a bad card. Next up, we have Ayakuma Wavebender, which is a three cost unit that has an arrive ability that reads return target unit to its owner's hand. I like cards like this. A three cost for 1500 power isn't fantastic, but the fact that you can return uh, any of your opponent's tokens or anything like that, or a one cost unit that maybe doesn't have an arrive ability, maybe something like uh, you know, one one drop guardian that can't attack, where you're kind of clearing it and making them waste, you know, uh, a shard to bring it back out. So, I like this card. Good common. So moving on, we have Kako, Brother of Destiny, which is a three cost unit with two thousand power, and it reads: This card costs one less to play if you control a Mirai unit. It also has an exhaust ability where you put a target unit in a discard zone on top of its owner's deck. So the fact that it can come out for two if you control a Mirai unit is pretty neat. I don't know if we've seen any Mirai units yet, uh, but maybe we will going forward. Uh, the exhausting to put a target unit in the discard zone on top of its owner's deck is pretty interesting. You can put any card in your discard zone which you pitched with Jamile, or maybe your opponent, you know, discarded it back on the top of your deck so you can draw it again. So uh, I kind of like that. That effect I think is pretty useful, especially with the early state of the game. So this is an interesting common. Next up, we've got Knowledge Unbound, which is a five cost spell that simply reads draw three cards. Now on the surface, I think this card's very tempting just because you get to plus two off it. But for a cost of five, I think it's pretty expensive and I don't think it's very good for that cost. So next we have Myra, Sister of Sight, which is a three cost unit for 2000 power. And it reads, this card costs one less to play if you control a Kako unit. So we saw Kako uh, two cards back and he costs one less if she's on the field. So they kind of go in tandem here. So that's kind of neat. She also has an exhaust ability. It says declare a name, then reveal the top card of your deck. If it is th the declared card, add it to your hand. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of your deck. So this goes hand in hand with Kako because whenever he exhausts, he can put something on the top of your deck and then she'll know what it is and can exhaust and then you'll add it to your hand for free. Um, it's not bad. The problem is you're wasting an attack for both of them. So you're... Uh, wasting your turn on not attacking towers and you're adding cards to your hand. So if you want to play passive, I mean, this is an okay strategy. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's very passive. And uh, I don't know if passive is good or not yet, or if you want to go aggressive. So time will tell, but these are pretty interesting cards. Next up, we have Reactive Ruins, which is a two cost spell that has Instacast and it reads return target unit that came into play this turn to the top of its owner's deck. So I like this card. The fact that it puts the card back on top of your owner's deck just for a cost of two. Yes, it needs to come out that turn, but still it sets your opponent back a turn just for a cost of two, and it's a common. So I, I really like this card. I think this card uh, goes into most water decks. So our last common is Shard Research Facility. It's a four-cost augment that has an arrivability that says place counters on this card equal to the number of water units you control. At the end of your turn, you may remove one or more counters from this card. Add target spell from your discard zone to your hand with cost equal to the number of counters you removed. Then if this card has no counters on it, sacrifice it. So this card's pretty interesting. The fact that it's a four cost for an augment is kind of expensive. But being able to grab back some of your uh, important spells is kind of nice. So I could see this being a possible add in water decks, um, mainly because water has a lot of really good spells. So time will tell on this. It could be too expensive, but ultimately it's a, it's a toss up card. It, it can be good in some situations, but it could be dead also. So now we're going to move on to the rares. So the first rare we have is Hannah. Apprentice of Mayu, which is a five cost unit with 2,500 power, and it has an arrive ability that says put target unit with cost two or less from your discard zone into play. Um, you know, we, we see cards like this throughout this set. Um, most of them are from the hand. This one's from the discard zone, which is pretty interesting. So to get back 
uh, a unit that has already um, been ruined instead of wasting one in your hand uh, is pretty neat. Um, but a five cost is kind of expensive. So I would think that there's better five cost, better five cost cards to play. So this is an okay rare. Next we have Ayakuma Juggernaut, which is a five cost, 3000 power unit that has Guardian and reads if this card uses Guardian, switch it to active after that battle. He also has a shard drain ability that says this card cannot be targeted by spells or abilities this turn. So this card's actually really cool. Um, 3000 power plus Guardian and it can use Guardian twice. So this is a great late game drop where you're blocking some of these uh, small monsters that are trying to poke in for game. It's pretty much blocking at least two attacks. I mean, some of the bigger monsters have more than 3,000 power, but ultimately I think if you choose the correct monsters to block, you're gonna get two, two uses out of that Guardian ability. And the fact that it can shard drain to not be affected by anything, well, targeted, is really strong. So this is a really good rare, I really like it. Next we have Jamal Suspicious Sorcerer, which is a three cost unit with 2,000 power. And it reads, when you play a card with Shard Drain, deal 1,000 to target unit. So, um, this card's pretty interesting. You don't have to use the Shard Drain ability. You just need to play a card that has Shard Drain on it. So, uh, a couple of the cards that we've already reviewed have an optional Shard Drain effect. So, even if you weren't to use that, you would still be able to deal the 1,000 with this unit. So, it's kind of cool. Um, but your deck would need to focus around shard draining and i don't know if it's the main focus of water i think it's kind of just an extra action of water so uh this card's interesting um maybe it gets better in the future but right now i think shard draining isn't the main focus of a deck so i don't know how often you're going to get this off but for a three cost and 2000 power it's it it has a lot of value so the last rare we have is tidal rush which is a three cost spell with instacast and it reads, as an additional cost to play this card, you may shard drain one. If you do, return target unit to its owner's hand. Then the regular ability reads, return target unit to its owner's hand, then draw one card. So, I really like this card. This card's really good. Anytime you have additional effects, uh, I, I think it's great. So you can play you know, a three cost spell and you can bounce two of your opponent's monsters to your hand and then you draw a card. So. This card is really good in my opinion. You get a lot of value out of it and it can save you late game or help you push for game uh, at the end just by bouncing anything to your opponent's hand to swing in. So now we're gonna move on to the super rares. So our first super rare is Celestial Magic Chronostasis, which is a six cost spell that has instacast and reads place all units on the field on the bottom of their owner's decks in any order you choose. So this spell is obviously very powerful as it should be for a six cost. You place all units on the field, so that includes yours, um, and your opponents on the bottom of the decks. So this card can be very good in certain situations where your opponent is trying to swarm you, they have field control, it can s swing games. You know, it can swing a game where, where you'd probably lose and then it puts you in a winning position. So this card I think is a must play, um, but probably maybe a one of, I don't know, maybe two of. The fact that it's a six cost, it could be dead, especially if you draw it really early. But uh, I think it. I think you need to play at least one. It's, it's that good. So our next super is Mr. Kins, Cryptic Familiar. He's a one cost unit with 500 power that has an arrive ability that says, look at the top two cards of your deck and put them back in any order. And then he has an exhaust ability that says draw one card, then return this card to the top of his owner's deck. So this card's okay. Uh, I like the arrive ability where you can look at two cards instead of one like Azure Seer does. But his exhaust ability isn't that great. Um, putting him back on the top of your deck is more of a downside than a positive. He has a good scout with only 500 attack, so you're not going to break any towers. You can kind of pick and choose what you want to attack then, so that's kind of nice. Um, but I think Azure Seer kind of outclasses this, so I'm not too big of a fan of this super rare. So for our last super rare, 
we have the Omega Magic for this element, which in our previous reviews, we've mentioned that all of the elements get their own Omega Magic. And the water element's Omega Magic is Mizu, which is a two cost spell that has Instacast. And it says, choose one, or if you have two or less towers remaining, choose two. So these are the three effects you could choose from. Draw one card, exhaust target unit, and return target unit to its owner's hand if it is exhausted. I really like this card. All of the Omega Magics, in my opinion, are good. They only get better as the game goes on. Um, this one, I think you're going to be using the draw one card and exhaust target unit the most. But I like it. It's got a lot of uses. And last but not least, we have the Argent Rares. So for the first Argent Rare, we have Leviathan the Ancient Serpent, which is a 7 cost unit with 4,000 power. And it has three effects. It has the Guardian ability, it has the Destroyer ability, and it has an Arrive ability that says take control of target unit. So this card can be extremely deadly if you drop it at the right moment. It's very expensive at seven, especially for water where you kind of want to play on your opponent's turn. But the fact that it has Destroyer, Guardian, and an ability to take a problematic unit from your opponent and give it to you for free is super good. Uh, yeah, so like most Argent Rares, this card's good. <laughs> So last but not least is Mayu, Grand Sorceress, which is the second Argent Rare for water. It is a six cost unit that has 3,500 power and an arrive ability that reads return target spell in your discard zone to your hand. And if you do, the next spell you play this turn costs zero. And it says once per turn, when you play a card with shard drain or use shard drain, return target other unit to the top of its owner's deck. So... This card is dirty. This card is so good. It plays perfectly into the water deck. This card is nuts. And also, the art is pretty dope. So, <laughs> man, this card, this card's so good. It's so good. I have nothing else to say about it. I mean, the fact that you can play anything for a cost of zero whenever it comes out, and then on your opponent's turn, you can interrupt and just... Oh, the, the disruption from this card alone can win games. It can just sit on the field and bounce things. So, yeah, what a way to close out water. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, watch closely for my last two. I'm going to try and get them out here in the next day or two, depending on when you guys watch this. And uh, then we'll wrap that up, and I'm going to try and give you guys uh, videos at least twice a week. And then sprinkle stuff in maybe three or four times depending on if I have enough content. So, you know, stay tuned, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good one.